Hi class. So this screencast covers V.3, determining the words, the meaning of words using antonyms in the context. So these are going to be opposites of each other. An antonym is the opposite of the word we're trying to talk about or find. So you notice I have two screens up. One is for IXL and one are for some notes that I'm going to take while I work through these problems just to help provide clarity in the questions. All right, so let's look through here. The first question is, read the passage, then select the antonym of the word in bold. All right, so the passage states, in a trial, defense lawyers may try to have cases dismissed for a variety of reasons. For example, they may claim the prosecutor doesn't have enough, hasn't provided enough proof. In such cases, they may ask for the judge to dismiss the case for insufficient evidence. So insufficient is the word that I need the opposite of. So insufficient, insufficient. I know that um, like if you said, oh, I have insufficient funds, I have not enough money. That's sad. Also, insufficient, like that was an insufficient job, was not good enough. Not good enough. So like that, those, that's pretty much insufficient. But so let's look through a word. We need the opposite of insufficient. So the opposite, the opposite of insufficient is, would be um, having enough. So if I, having enough. So if I had sufficient funds, I'd having enough. Um, so let's see, let's look through here. So I'm looking for the antonym of our word and bold insufficient. It says, I'm gonna read the, passage again, just so I get clarity on what it says. In, in a criminal trial, defense lawyers may have the cases dismissed for a variety of reasons. So cases can get dismissed for a variety of reasons. For example, they may claim prosecutor hasn't provided enough proof. So hasn't provided enough proof. In such a case, they may ask the judge to dismiss the case for insufficient evidence. So insufficient evidence. So that means they're gonna ask the judge to dismiss the case because there wasn't enough evidence. There wasn't enough as evidence for the trial to go through. So what is the antonym? Enough. So if I have enough proof, then that would definitely be the, di the difference. All right, so I'm going to say that enough proof is the opposite of not having enough evidence. And look at that. There we go. So our next part of this question says, what is the meaning of the word insufficient as it's used in the passage? Use the antonym enough as a context clue to help determine the meaning. So as we talked about before, we said that if you have enough proof, this is the opposite. So unreliable, no, it doesn't talk about the proof being not worthy, trustworthy. Unnecessary, well, no, I think all proof is necessary when it comes to a, a court trial. So we're going to go with inadequate or lacking. And there we go. All right, so let's try another one. I'll erase my notes. So let's try another one. Remember, we're trying to figure out the meaning of the bolded words by using the antonym we find. So Mayla, a new addition to the Campbell High School softball team, after much practice, has improved and can quickly become an adept hitter. So if I don't know what adept means, well, I know that she did much practice, she improved. 
So she did, so she, after much practice, she has improved. So, adept hitter. So adept must be a positive thing for a hitter to be. Adept must be a hot pot, must be a positive, a positive thing for a hitter to be. Okay, so we'll start with that. So now we're looking something that's not positive, that's not um, positive for a softball player to be. Because now we know that she has much practice, she's improved, and now she's, a, a, she's become an adept hitter, which is good. So let's keep reading. On defense, however, she is still somewhat clumsy and frequently misses easy catches. All right, so now I'm looking for a, a negative word. So I'm looking for a negative word, something that's the opposite of positive. So as I'm reading here, it says on defense, however, she is still somewhat clumsy and frequently mentioned. So this is negative. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick clumsy as my antonym of adept. Oh, awesome. Now it asked us, what is the meaning of adept used in this passage, using the antonym clumsy as a context clue? All right, so we have, so we have clumsy's bad, so we need something that's good. So let's look at my options. Become a experienced hitter. Yeah, that's, that's, I mean, experience. Well, she only got the experience because she practiced. Ambiguous, no, that doesn't really make sense that, or highly skilled. So she's improved her skills at hitting. So I'm gonna pick highly skilled. And there we go. Look at that. Let's do one more for the sake of driving this skill home. All right, let's do one more skill. So we're gonna read the passage. Writing that is concise often conveys its message in the most clearly and effective way. So it says, I'm not really sure what concise means, but it, it says it conveys, writing that conveys its message. So it conveys its message most clearly and effectively. So most clearly and effectively. So concise, gave, so I know that it must be something to do with being the most clear and the most effective. Must be the most clear and the most effective. So now, if, if I'm looking for something that isn't clear and effective, I'll keep reading. You can prevent your writing from becoming too wordy by deleting unnecessary words and phrases and by using specific, precise language. All right, so I'm looking for a word that means not clear and effective. Well, I'm gonna go with wordy. Because I know that if, when I become too wordy when I'm teaching, you guys always get lost and don't understand what I'm saying. Because if I add in too much extra detail, it's not clearly stated, and it's definitely not effective if you don't know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So being wordy, I think, is the opposite of being concise. Hey, hey, there we go. So let's look. So we're going to find out the meaning of concise of concise by using the antonym wordy. So let's look at my, my options here. So what does concise mean? We know it conveys its message clearly and effectively. We don't want to be wordy. Wordy is the opposite of being concise. Formal and elegant. That's a choice. Well, we're not really talking about the style of writing, informal, formal. Persuasive or convincing. 
Well, we're, we're not really talking about what type of writing we are. But look, one of our options is short and to the point. Well, short and to the point would definitely be clear and effective. So I'm going to pick short and to the point. And there we go. You'll continue working on this skill in the same manner. Remember, when you're working with antonyms, it's the opposite of what that of what the bolded word might be. All right, good luck on your skills. If you need to rewatch this video, and I know you guys are going to do great.